Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Zoom Serious Talk. Today, our guest is Dr. Aileen Tekinartola, who currently works at the English Language uh, Teaching Department, TED University. Aileen Ojan received her PhD in Second Language Acquisition and Instructional Technology from the University of South Florida. She has worked at various universities and taken part in several teacher training uh, programs in different parts of Turkey. Her research interests focus on online learning and teacher education. The title of her talk this evening is What Does Teaching Involve and How Do We Teach It? Or How Can We Teach It? How does speaking? What does speaking in all? In uh, okay, well, okay. <laughs> what did I say? What does speaking? Okay, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> so I need to attend this session, all ears, to improve my speaking. See? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I, know, Jam, I really thank you a lot from the bottom of my heart for being with us and welcome again. Uh, I'm going to leave the screen to you. So go ahead, please. We are all listening to you. Thank you so much, Aydan Ojam, for inviting me to in Get Serious. It's a great, really a big honor for me to be a part of uh, the uh, in Get Zoom series. I really hope I can do uh, provide some resources and guidance for participants and those who uh, will watch uh, the video recording on YouTube. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I would like to share my feelings and I, I'm sure we all feel uh, really upset, sometimes angry, uh, depressed, uh, about you know what has been going on in Turkey in terms of disasters, earthquakes, and uh, recently flood, flooding. Uh, I'm really sorry for the uh, those we lost, uh, and I hope you are all and your loved ones are safe, and hopefully we will uh, we will be safe. So uh, tonight uh, I present I uh, created a presentation. Uh, thinking about the participants that we will tell. Uh, by the way, uh, I was really not hoping to see my dear Professor Hisnojam. Uh, I'm so uh, like a child pampered <laughs> or so excited, so honored to see uh, him uh, now tonight. And welcome all teachers, colleagues, professors, my students, or uh, students at the ELT departments at other universities. I really hope you uh, would enjoy the presentation. At any time, please feel free to uh, interrupt or ask me questions. You can use chat box, and I want to lead some interactive session with you. So it is not very theoretical. Uh, it is not research kind of base. It is very practical, practice-oriented uh, presentation. Okay, let's start. If it moves, I am waiting. <laughs> it is not going. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'll outline some of the you know uh, key topics, sub uh, subtitles we're gonna uh, see in this presentation. We will discuss speaking, what it is, you know, what do we understand? Uh, and why we emphasize interaction in language classes? Why is it necessary for language learning? And what makes speaking difficult? Uh, some types of speaking activities in classroom, how do we categorize them, okay? Uh, using information distribution to encourage negotiation, some techniques we will cover, and principles for teaching speaking skills, uh, criteria for evaluating speaking tasks, and just a little bit we will touch on error treatment. And I will take your questions and uh, we can discuss at the end. So, when we look at speaking in the dictionary, the definition is to utter words or articulate sounds with the ordinary voice. So is, is this just oral 
uh, when you look at the definition, it sounds like it is speaking is just uh, voicing out messages. But we also have nonverbal communication. When we are speaking, we use mimics, facial expressions, our hand movements, body language is also important. It is a part of communication. And we also have sign languages, we know that. And in language acquisition or in language teaching, speaking is a, a highly complex interactive skill. So it is not very easy to define speaking actually. So dictionary definition is very limited. Uh, why is interaction necessary for language learning? So I also teach second language acquisition course or language acquisition course. Uh, I have been teaching for a while. Uh, I will not, my point is not to, you know, go to the theories to discuss all this input hypothesis, output hypothesis, etc. But for a language learning, there has to be some input, right? And that input has to have some characteristics like meaningful, rich input. And uh, when the learner is getting the input, it is not just I receive and then I produce. There is a negotiation part. Think about two people interacting, okay? Uh, if I don't understand something, I signal it. And then the speaker modifies uh, the, his or her output, the sentence or uh, phrase. And there is negotiation. This is called negotiation of meaning, sometimes negotiation of the form. We can we discuss our aims to get the meaning clear. And then the input is modified. I'm receiving the input. I produce some output, but again, there, there can be a there can be a need, there can be another negotiation. So I change my output, I modify my output as well. So it is like a cycle. It's not a linear process. Language acquisition is, as you know, it's like a, a cyclical or U-shaped process, a complex process. So the interaction is uh, playing a crucial role in language learning. So we are not just learning languages, babies, uh, think about the first language acquisition. They, cannot learn their mother tongue just watching uh, cartoons. Or you can let the babies watch cartoons in English and they don't learn English in that way. It has to be human social interaction. <clears throat> <coughs> so basically this is uh, the summary of what I said. We learn from others, we learn from human beings. We need to interact. We have to have a face-to-face -face interactions or social interaction. And we need to negotiate meaning. Uh, we adjust our output uh, to communicate with others. We receive comprehensible input. We need a lot of plenty uh, of input. We produce pushed output and finally develop the language and the strategies needed for uh, communication. We develop communicative competence through interaction. What makes speaking difficult then? I know, but I can't speak. This is the most common uh, sentence, I guess, we hear from people all around. I know English, I understand, but I can't speak, I can't explain it, or I can't uh, speak just. Uh, here is the uh, Manti uh, link that I shared with you. You can just use your phone and go to the website Manti. Uh, okay, let's edit it. Okay. And you can type your answers. What do you think? Some words, phrases, okay. Uh, why speaking is difficult? What are the uh, contributing factors for this? Is it working? Are you able to go to the site? And let's see. Yes. You also write here. 
Hayim Hocam, yes. <gülüyor> yes, o da var. Do you speak diye soruyor. Evet. Anxiety. Low self-esteem. Yes, Aydan Hocam. Our lessons are curriculum, teaching, methodologies, grammar focus. Two grammar emphasize. Social background. Mm -hmm. Pronunciation, Celine, thank you. Uh, our pronunciation problems. We know the word, but we don't know how to pronounce the word, maybe. Yes, it is always the teacher who explains and students are silent in the uh, lessons. Evet, mantiye bakalım. Ben de öyle düşündüm. Manti... Okay. Bakalım mantiye tıklamaya çalışıyorum. Bu açık arka sayfada. O sayfaya gidebiliyorum. I'm sorry. I need to stop sharing and just open the Manti here. And now I can share the screen. Somehow it didn't allow me to do that. Okay. So we have a word cloud. Anxiety, hesitation, curriculum, fear of public peers. Um, more immediate responses. Hmm. When the learner doesn't have enough time to think and, uh, you know, form his or her sentence. Lack of vocabulary, lack of practice, lack of uh, practice opportunities, definitely. Uh, lack of community where we can feel safe to, you know, speak with others. Being shy, low self-esteem, Uh, more immediate responses when there is immediate response. Yes, we don't have enough time to think if, you know, our uh, proficiency is not high. Wanting to be perfect. Hmm. Just waiting, keeping silence until we are perfect to speak. <laughs> fear of public or peers. Yeah, fear of being judged by others. Lack of influence. I didn't get that one, lack of influence. Maybe you can explain in the chat, lack of influence, lack of practice, lack of community, curriculum, anxiety. Okay, thank you so much. You are so right. Very good answers we have here. No comprehensible input. Okay, sometimes input is limited and there is no uh, output opportunities. Thinking in Turkish, then translated in, in English. That's true, Hocam. You are right. So it takes double time. We need more time. Okay. Mantı ile uğraşmıyorum. Orada evet olur. Çok olur hocam. İkisini de okuyorum. Kiyarı kaçırdınız. Ama bir dahaki seferi biraz daha beklerim. Kiyar. Being perfectionist in learning and the fear of making mistakes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go back to PowerPoint. All right. Uh, so when we look at the speaking, uh, what makes speaking difficult, the, uh, all different factors, I try to make some categorization. Although they are not absolutely, you know, uh, clear cut categories, we have the language knowledge problem, limited resources, like not knowing the pronunciation, not knowing the reduced forms, stress, rhythm, intonation, okay, syntax and grammar, limited uh, grammar knowledge, uh, limited vocabulary. Uh, not knowing colloquial language, slang, idioms, uh, different, not familiar, uh, not being familiar with different genres of discourse. So we are not just talking about, hey, how are you daily, basic communicative, you know, dialogues. 
there, there are different types of uh, just genres of discourse and not knowing how to organize our talks according to the uh, target discourse type organization using cohesive markers, uh, the communicative skills, clustering your uh, speech. It's not like reading word by word. Speaking has a different tone. We are taking breath, right? The, so it is called phrasing, breath groups. So it sounds natural, like a natural speech. It's it, it different than reading. Uh, we, sometimes we are not familiar with redundancy. When we are speaking, we need to produce redundant uh, ex, uh, extra information. We, we repeat ourselves, we elaborate it. Uh, there are performance variables like um, air, you know, in English, we don't like all silence, uh, think, thinking a period. So we feel them like air, yeah, kind of. These are fillers. We backtrack go back to the beginning of the sentence, re, uh, start, change the, you know, uh, uh, there are the sentences are not even full sentences. In, in speech, this is normal. We do self-monitoring and self-correction. Uh, we need to consider the rate of delivery, how fast we speak, uh, we need to adjust, and we need to practice some speaking strategies uh, like turn-taking strategies, how to initiate a talk, how to give a response, uh, or uh, initiating, responding, and turn-taking. And there are also pragmatics issues, uh, knowing how to use language appropriately in a given context. Uh, our, the way we talk, the way we speak, which language we use, it all depends on the context. Uh, there are also affective factors. You also uh, wrote this, uh, like anxiety, being shy, uh, fear of criticism. Yes, we also have language identities. Um, I may like enjoy learning English, okay? I am okay maybe with the language, but maybe I don't like the culture. Maybe I don't like to sound like British. Maybe I find it funny. So although I can imitate, I realize that this is what I do. I can imitate British accent uh, when I play <laughs> or when I um, have with my friends, but when I do speak, I have Eileen's speech. So it's, this is how I feel comfortable. We all have our language identity. This is how we feel comfortable to speak uh, in that style. And there's also nonverbal communication, uh, even the proximity with the people, how you, you are close, how much you get closer, how if you are touchy, you want to touch or not, you know, this is, uh, you need to know about how in that culture, the norms of uh, pragmatics. We have some comments here. Yes, I don't know, John. Students need to understand that Turkish and English are two separate languages and translation is not an age rule skill. It requires formal education. Yeah, what we do in our mind is not actually quality translation <laughs> or not acceptable. That's right. Sometimes inter interference make it difficult. Yes, idolex. But different styles, maybe I don't know, John, yeah? Different accents. Uh, uh, maybe we are not familiar with. Uh, I generate Ujak <laughs> Pushu. So funny. Yeah, on the on Instagram, you share Hojam such funny uh, translation mistakes. I know. I love those. Some other contributing factors. Uh, that makes you know speaking difficult. You also brought those uh, on Manti and in the chat area. Unfortunately, there is very limited opportunity to speak in and out of the classroom in our country, right? In the EFL context, the, uh, our learners don't have enough chance to speak. We have crowded classes and 
some traditional methods are still unfortunately preferred compared to more communicative methods, communicative language teaching or task-based language teaching. Uh, so grammar is the king. Teachers feel that they have to teach grammar. They are concerned about the exams, tests, you know, in university exam. Do we have any writing section? No. Do we have any speaking section? No. So why do they care about those skills? Uh, there is curriculum restriction. There is time restriction. Uh, they are under the, you know, I need to finish this unit by the end of, uh, let's say, January. And students are not getting enough encouragement, not enough, you know, uh, guidance and <clears throat> It's just encouragement. They need to be encouraged to speak. So they lack motivation. Sometimes we do the everything, you know, teacher is using communicative language teaching uh, methods, etc. But sometimes students are not motivated. This can happen. And that we need to investigate that. Why? What is the problem? Okay. Fear of examination is also a discouraging factor. Yes, definitely. The national curriculum discourages uh, grammar translation method. If you are interested, you can download. Yes, Hojam, is the written curriculum is great. The, the theoretical background I read, they, uh, they emphasize communicative language teaching, uh, the, but not all teachers are comfortable with communicative language teaching methods, I guess. Okay. Types of classroom speaking performance. Uh, what are they? Uh, there are six types. Uh, imitative speak or speech or imitative tasks, intensive task, responsive task, transactional, interpersonal and extensive, uh, extensive monologues we can call. Okay, let's look in detail what these are. Okay, imitative. Uh, as you can guess from the title, it's based on imitation. It is like drilling, it is uh, repetition. Uh, in the past, we emphasize we were doing actually meaningless repetitions, dress. We didn't focus on meaning in the old times, but now we understand that, you know, we have to focus on meaning first. Whatever they are repeating, it should be meaningful, but also it shouldn't be boring. There are very fun activities and games which lead to repetition and students enjoy those. And some activities are like minimal pair activities, uh, word repetition, phrase, or sentence repetition. If you are using imitative tasks, you need to keep them short, just a few minutes during the lesson. Keep them simple, one point at a time. Uh, keep them quick paced, make them meaningful, fun, purposeful, limit them to phonological, morphological, or syntactic points. You need to have a focus. Make sure they ultimately lead to, lead to communicative goals. So this is a beginning step. This is not the ultimate, the whole activity you plan for the lesson. Uh, and don't overuse them. Intensive. Uh, it is kind of you know, uh, controlled activity still producing a limited amount of language in a highly controlled context to achieve certain grammatical or lexical mastery. Uh, for example, we do in the classroom, read aloud a passage, give a direct response to a simple question. Teacher asks a short answer question or oral sentence completion, oral clause, fill in the blanks, dialogue completion, picture cute elicitation of grammatical items. These are still not very communicative, okay? But they have a purpose to 
emphasize or you know help the kids or learners gain some mastery over you know lexical items or grammar. Then we have responsive type. This is the most common uh, student speech in the classroom. Uh, short replies to teacher questions or student questions or comments, and they are meaningful. How are you today? A kind of question that a student can answer if they're giving a responsive type. What is the main idea in this essay? So what did you write for question number one? So the answers that we are getting from the students are examples of responsive uh, speaking. And the fourth one, transactional dialogue. Uh, okay, let's add it there, perhaps. Transactional language is an extended form of responsive language. In responsive language, we had short answers, but now uh, we have a, a more sentences, more output, okay? Uh, there's exchange of information. Conversations may have more of a negotiative nature than uh, responsive. Uh, samples like ordering food in a restaurant, students can act out. Ordering a taxi, checking into a hotel, changing money at a bank, okay? Uh, borrowing a book from the library. What do these remind you? What do you remember? What are these uh, dialogue topics or dialogue activities? What are they? Functions. Thank you, Farhat Hocam. Functions. Uh, using language to do something. They are well, functions of the language. Uh, can be a situational language. Mm -hmm. Teaching, thank you, Turo. In situational language, we, I think we see it like uh, at the restaurant, at the post office. They start like this, okay. And the fifth one, interpersonal dialogue. It's a dialogue, interpersonal. It's more social, okay, to maintain social relationships more than transmitting of facts or information. Uh, we can see role plays, games, interviews in the classroom. Generally, uh, interpersonal dialogues have a casual register. Uh, they have colloquial language. Em they are emotionally charged. They may, they may have some slang, ellipses, sarcasm, uh, hidden meanings. In the EFR classroom, uh, unfortunately, most of these features are not present. We can see a casual register, informal language, uh, colloquial language, okay, but not sarcasm, ellipses, slang, they are limited in natural uh, environment or in when the native speakers interact, we can see those. Extensive, the last one. Uh, this is the, the uh, most, uh, how can I say, uh, the length in terms of length, this is the longest one uh, taking up for output from the student. Students can create oral reports, summaries, or they can do storytelling or create a short speech. Um, and the register is more formal. They have time to, pre generally they have some time to pre get prepared for these, but sometimes it can be impromptu. Sometimes I uh, stop to read the messages, I'm sorry. Okay. Functional notional syllabus vardı bir zamanlar. Evet Ferhat hocam hatırlıyorum. Okay. Uh, features of truly communicative activities. Our aim, we have seen the types of uh, speaking uh, tasks in a classroom. 
But uh, as a teacher, we want to carry out very in effective, involving uh, communicative activities, right? But we need to know about, you know, some features. Uh, what are the common features of these activities? Uh, to begin with, those activities, effective communicative activities, uh, they tend to have information gap. So a person knows something, B, the person doesn't know about it, and B holds information that A doesn't know. So they need to interact. This is a real interaction, sharing information. These communicative activities are meaningful. They have a purpose. Learners just don't chit chat. They have a purpose. They produce a task in the end. They solve a problem, they create something, uh, they, they order, they underline, they match, they are doing something while speaking. Those activities are guided, they provide a guide to the students, they are well structured, step by step, students know what to do. And finally, they produce a task. Learners have a choice of what to say, how to say. So freedom, and they feel safe to speak. They are not embarrassed or to uh, make a grammar mistake or pronunciation mistake, you know. They feel welcome, they feel safe. And we, those activities promote enjoyment. They enjoy doing those activities. They love to participate. It is an inner motivation. Um, and learners give and take feedback from their interlocutor, from their group mates, classmates. Uh, this is called negotiation, negotiation of meaning. And sometimes they negotiate the form. Do we say so? Don't we add ED? It is past tense, right? They can do self-correction, peer correction. Okay. And when we look at those communicative activities, we see active involvement by the students. No passive student in the class. All students have a role. They all participate. They all uh, have uh, high motivation. Teachers are just facilitators. Their role is to facilitate. Okay, they don't do the, much of the talk. <laughs> they, they uh, if it needed they uh, interrupt or interfere to talk. And we see use of lots of strategies, communication strategies, learning strategies are practiced by the learners. Finally, uh, truly communicative activities, they also reinforce 4C, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking. If we give them a project, if they have a real problem, especially like uh, talking about, you know, now a re recent and valuable topic, how to provide support or help for those who are homeless because of the earthquake? What can aid programs, uh, donation programs we can do as a group in our community? So there is critical thinking. And it is really meaningful, and it is per, there is personalization related to real life. Then you will have more motivated students to participate because it is it has a meaning, it has a purpose. Okay, let's see the messages. Okay, opinion gap, reasoning gap. That's true. Information gap can be in different forms not only knowledge gap, but opinion or reasoning. That's, that's true. Thank you, Zubaid Ojan. Using information distribution to encourage negotiation. Uh, some effective speaking tasks, how we can categorize them. Okay. Will you please uh, listen to me, my dear computer, <laughs> Moo? <laughs> I click several times and finally it gets, I don't know why. 
Okay, this is how I categorize them. First of all, we divide them into two categories, one-way tasks and the other one is two-way tasks. One-way task, uh, it leads to a cooperating arrangement. The learners all see the same information. They share the same information and they try to do whatever the task is together. They need to negotiate, share information, but uh, they're not hiding uh, things from each other. They need to speak of their own ideas, uh, bring up their ideas and uh, share it. Um, the other type is uh, the learners all see the same information, but they may have a different role in the project. It can be a project, but you are the liaison, I am the uh, motivator, I am the uh, writer, note taker, kind of. They can have a different role. Uh, okay, in two way tasks, there is information gap. It is called a split information. Either there is a split information arrangement or a superior inferior arrangement. In a split information type, uh, A person has the, some part of the information, B person has different part. So they need to uh, come together, make the puzzle, kind of. It's like jigsaw activities. In the superior inferior in arrangement, one learner has all the information, other learners need that information they don't they they lack uh, for example listen and do you listen to me and do what i say or like picture drawing right uh, or controlling the teacher discover the story discover the answer could you repeat that these are uh, some examples uh, in the a split information arrangement, complete the map. It is very popular, very common. You can uh, probably you all know about it. And strip story. We will see some examples of this now. Let's go. Move. Oh, Gizinabla. <laughs> Are you all familiar with Gizinabla? Agony column, the agony column. Okay. Uh, this is a cooperating arrangement task. Learners are presented with an agony letter, agony aunt letter, okay? Uh, read the letter to the learners, but don't read any answers, any answers that is written by the uh, agony aunt. Uh, go over the unknown vocabulary or difficulties and, uh, if there is any need. The learners can take notes as they listen to the letter. Uh, they may ask questions, repeat it aloud, phrase by phrase, or maybe they can write it as dictation. In some, uh, sometimes we see that it is just given as a reading text. Why not? Uh, after the letter is read, the learners discuss it in small groups and suggest advice. So our Grammar, a target grammar is giving advice generally with this type of activity. Uh, students write uh, advice letters. I, I, yes, advice letters, advice uh, paragraphs. They are giving advice to the uh, person uh, in the letter the, based on their problem. The last step is when the teacher presents the advice given in the newspaper, uh, they can compare, okay? This is what they suggested, they advised. This is our advice. So what's the difference, how we can compare? All right. So let, let's look at this activity. You are alone and lost in the jungle. Put the following things in order of importance for your survival. These are the items. So many items, I, I just gave a few examples. Uh, as there is a strong focus on reaching consensus among the group members, okay? And this encourages negotiation of language items. If you want to reach an agreement, then there must be understanding. So it should be meaningful. What type of activity do you think is it? 
Is it one way task or two way task? If you're in Jamaica. Hello, John. Uh, that's really great. Do you use agony color? Okay. No, no, they are they are working in groups, so John. I don't know, John. A group of students are given a case here. They have a problem or they have a they need to rank things. They need to uh, come to a consensus. They need to make an agreement. Okay, this we definitely need number one tent or blankets or matches, kind of, or food. Uh, they are doing ranking, ordering. Mm -hmm. uh, is this one way or a two way task? Sequencing one way. Okay, I, I get the, the answer. Thank you, Shiloja. This is one way, uh, definitely. There is no information yet. Uh, if they start discussing their choices, still it is not information gap. Because uh, in any activity, I speak of my own idea. There is negotiation of meaning, that's true. This is, I believe we need matches, opinion gap. <laughs> evet. I think all communicative activities kind of uh, hold this opinion gap. They have to, right? It's, uh, okay, it is called a cooperating arrangement task. It's called ranking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And modify the statements. Students are given a group. They are working in groups again. Uh, they are given a set of controversial statements, such as every child needs at least one brother and sister. English medium instruction should be banned. It is too bad. <laughs> okay. So they work in groups to make changes to the statements. They modify the sentences so that everybody in the group can agree with them. What kind of task is this? One way, two way, is that information yet? It okay. includes multi dimension, Soja. Go ahead, Soja, Milan, Soja, Yeah, it includes multi dimension features of the communicative task. Okay. Yeah, maybe you are to some right. Extent, yeah. yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. uh, it is called a cooperating arrangement, mm -hmm. a one-way task. They, they are looking at the same thing and they don't uh, have different parts of a text or different parts of a, different uh, maps, kind of. Uh, it's called one-way. Okay, problem solving. Learners work in groups. They are given a problem. And um, for example, a teacher sees a student cheating in an examination. He is the student who produces the student in his paper. He is a good student, but because of his outside work, his marks have not been very high. If he gets to law school, he will probably become a great lawyer. What should the teacher do? Pretend not to see the cheating? Quietly ask him to stop cheating. And these are some options, but I, I will not read. It. So students need to discuss and choose what they think the teacher should do. Uh, as a group, they again, they need to, you know, have a consensus and they are, this is a problem. And they are pro solving a problem. It is just a it's example scenario. We can have different kinds of problem cases, problem scenarios that we can share. What kind of task is this? Okay, I need to move fast. Do we have an answer here? Okay, one way, not two way. <laughs> yes, one way. It's one way, a cooperating arrangement. Cooperation, and there is cooperation, problem solving. Thank you. 
complete map. Now, uh, to, we have the same map, but we modify the map in a way that one student, they work in pairs. Uh, a pair has a different uh, places map, uh, ha marked on the map, uh, located. And the other person uh, doesn't have those marks, but have different places. And they need to describe, give direction, find, I don't know, whatever we give them. So they need to use the map and they need to share what they have. What kind of task is this? No, yes, two ways, split information. Thank you. Şimdi daha iyi oldu değil mi? Daha clear oldu örneklerden sonra. Okay. The strip story. The teacher chooses a story that has roughly as many sentences as the learners, number of learners, students in the class. The teacher writes each sentence on a strip of paper, gives uh, the students those sentences. Students read their sentences and give the papers back to the teacher. And then they try to uh, remember their sentences and put them themselves in order to make the whole story. Uh, they move around. So, uh, uh, but the story, we have to be careful that it should be very, uh, not very difficult, not challenging. The students uh, know the vocabulary and the grammar structures. Okay. Um, they share their sentences uh, with the other members in the group. And finally, without doing any writing, they arrange themselves, like, you know, stand up and move around to make the whole story from beginning to the end. It's called strip story. Um, what kind of activity is this? It, it is under the speaking activities we mentioned. Uh, the part is they are negotiating. During the task, they need to speak. Uh, my sentence is this. What do, what do you have? No, you can't be the first one. I am the first one. This is how they are practicing speaking during the negotiation. And it's a great question. Uh, you jump. Thank you. Okay. It is to weigh a simplest information. My sentence is different than yours. I don't know yours. I need to listen uh, to listen for listen to other students to get their sentences, understand the whole story. We are creating the whole story together. Okay, and this is discover the story. One learner has a copy of his story. The rest, they don't know the story. Uh, they tell the topic of the story to others in the group and they ask questions to discover what the story is all about. It's more questions and is it about this? What happens? Are there animals? Kind. So uh, lots of question and answer. But one person has this story, the others, doesn't have. So do you remember the type of activity? Two-way, superior, inferior. Emine Hocam, harikasınız. Great. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I am not asking the categories, but we have very, very variation, lots of techniques and different types. Uh, you know, different resources you can come up with. Uh, in this activity, I like this part I will tell you soon. The round robin strategy. It's a brainstorming strategy where students are seated around a table. Uh, they discuss like an academic topic or any specific topic, whatever. Uh, here in round robin, we emphasize equal participation. For equal participation, we can use talking chips or some kind of tokens. Let's say I give you 10 red tokens to Emily, 
tan yellow tokens to Sarah, kind of. And uh, when they take turns to speak, each time they put a token uh, uh, in the middle of the table. So the teacher, while walking around, the teacher can see you know, who is talking, how many turns that student uh, has taken, okay? So uh, this may give you some ideas. You, know, you can modify it. You, can, you may start using talking chips in your speaking lessons, in your group uh, discussions. I don't know, John. Oh, teşekkürler. <laughs> uh, I need to be a little bit quick. Okay. Think, pay, or share. I love this one. I almost use it very frequently in, in many of my lessons. Uh, when I have a question, you know, I give them some thinking time and then I pair up my students to discuss and uh, create a result, create something and then share with the class. Think, pair, share. Jigsaw, I prefer Jigsaw, especially if I have a lot of assigned reading chapters for a week. I believe, my I know that my students wouldn't be able to finish two, three chapters for a week. Then if they read one chapter, we are grateful. <laughs> we are thankful. <laughs> so I do kind of jigsaw reading. Each uh, a group of students receives a different part of a reading text. And then I regroup them. Uh, they share what they read with others, you know, all information is new, and they create, they are asked to create a poster, a summary, or uh, we are doing a class debate, etc. But Jitsu, the, uh, uh, it's a, just a uh, technique that you can apply to different skills uh, in different formats. It can be a speaking lesson, or it can be a reading class, whatever it is. It is, uh, I think, very valuable. We all need to know Jigsaw. Inside outside circles, uh, a great idea for the beginning of the term when the students, uh, they don't know each other. It's get to know activity, but it can be modified and can be done uh, information sharing, opinion sharing, two circles, inside circle, outside circle, students meet, Face to face, uh, so they speak, and when the teacher signals, maybe music or bell rings, and they move ahead, they change partner. They speak about the same thing again to a different person. So we emphasize fluency here. When there is repetition, the child has to has a chance to say the same thing again and again, but in not a boring way, in a meaningful purpose purposeful way because the listener is a, a new one, a new person each time. All right, listen and do activities. I think you're all familiar. We always use, uh, this is also fun, right? Like describe the picture. We can create speaking lessons based on pictures. Find the differences between two pictures to its information gap activity. Uh, we can plan for raw play simulation plays based on stories that we just we read. Students can create plays. We can create debate and discussion, oral summary of a story or digital storytelling. We can incorporate technology. Uh, they can create movies. They can use Flipgrid to just uh, record their speech or uh, or role play, whatever they are doing, they can present about some interesting topics, do presentations. And there are lots of games. Thanks to I don't know, John, we are learning a lot of games. I don't know, John, really, I follow your videos. <laughs> and uh, simple games like what I have in my bag, it, it, it encourages students to speak, okay? Uh, it, and they are having fun. Fun is important, especially for young learners, we emphasize, but I believe fun, we all need fun, <laughs> right? Okay, and another fluency activity, four, three, two, four, three, two. I think it is very simple and it will, you will remember this one, okay? 
the same information is being given or the child repeats the speech uh, in the first time uh, in four minutes. The, child, uh, the learner has four minutes to speak. And then the partners change. Now I have three minutes to say, talk about the same topic. Next time, another a new partner, I have two minutes to speak. So it helps with fluency and self-esteem. Okay, uh, do we have time, I don't know, John? Should I skip this one? No time, okay, let's skip. Principles, uh, nothing new. I always, uh, I have been saying fluency, accuracy, we need to balance. We need to think about, you know, what my students need. Not always fluency, not always accuracy. We need to balance and also sociocultural communicative competence, pragmatics issues, uh, uh, interaction strategies we need to emphasize. The design uh, task complexity, uh, not too challenging, not too simple, have a purpose in the end, interesting, meaningful, guided, structured activities, integrate skills, listening, speaking, reading, speaking, why not? Pre-teach, if there is a need for vocabulary, grammar, provide input beforehand, because what do I say? I don't know. I don't know anything about content. Hocam, ne diyeyim yani, değil mi? If, I, if you are asking me to speak, I need to have ideas. Uh, teach communication strategies, focus on pronunciation. If we had more time, I would love to give some pronunciation teaching techniques as well, but I know we, have, we don't have time. Provide feedback to the students on their progress. They, they love to be encouraged and praised. And provide uh, enough waiting time. You know, when you ask a question, when you give a task, that students need to have enough time to get prepared. Some oral communication strategies, I think you are all familiar. We can skip this one because we don't have time. Okay, you can just uh, scan. Okay, and how do we evaluate speaking task? Uh, some criteria for us, looking at pronunciation, looking at the fluency, vocabulary use, grammar use, discourse features, and if the task is completed or not. Have you met the objective? What is your objective in this activity? Error treatment. Uh, it's a very complex issue. What is an error? When do we treat an error? Do we need to correct all the errors? How do we correct? When do we correct? These are all questions that we all have, I guess. Uh, in a nutshell, <laughs> I have to run, I know, but this figure is very helpful from Brown and Lee. Uh, you can find uh, after this session is shared on YouTube, um, or you can, I don't know, screenshot right now. Uh, but it's really helpful guiding uh, teachers how to treat errors. So, in this uh, speaking uh, activity, do not interfere, please. It is a communicative activity. Wait until the task is over. Take some notes. If there is a communication breakdown, then you to provide help, you can interfere. Uh, there are different techniques for error correction. Uh, whatever you use, recast or meta language correction, uh, whatever you use, uh, we need to make sure that students notice our correction and we need to check if there is uptake or not, whether the student uh, corrected uh, the error or not. I'm so sorry, I am just <laughs> running. <laughs> Uh, and finally, I just want to, I know it's not related to my presentation, but at TED University, we have been using the GSC teacher toolkit in our courses. Our students uh, plan their lesson plans, uh, choose their lesson objectives based on the GSC ranges and out uh, learning out objectives uh, available on the website. It is a great resource for us, for the teacher trainers, professors, and teacher candidates and teachers as well. Uh, just in case if there is someone who haven't heard not using I just want to, you know, bring it up. 
And any questions? References and you can share your questions orally in the chat or uh, on Manti. Here's the Manti page. You can leave your comments. Uh, I don't know what about the timing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the way it's pretty good, pretty well. No problem. <laughs> Uh, well, I really want to thank you because you have reminded us uh, a fact, uh, the fact that language is never one skill only. It is always integrated. So in order for the learners to speak, they either need to read or listen uh, or write something so that they can you know, bring up uh, some kind of um, uh, uh, um, uh, an issue, a remark, a comment, a question, uh, an opinion, whatever. So that was really very good. But of course, here in this presentation, our focus was on speaking. Of course, I wish we had more time and we could have uh, tackled with pronunciation and evaluation, but maybe we can have separate sessions uh, on those later. Uh, because, I mean, uh, our colleagues are tired. It's a Friday evening. Uh, most probably they have uh, had a very busy week. <laughs> but... Uh, if there are any questions, you can raise okay. your hand or write it in the chat box. Please do not use, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I know, Jam, do not use the semantic thing because other, I cannot see your remarks if you use that. Uh, okay, I know, Jam, uh, you want me to read your question? Yes? Okay. Uh, I know, Jam says uh, he's stuck with inner outer circle activity. Uh, wouldn't it be too challenging and maybe impossible for students to find a new topic to talk each time and for each round? It would be a Jam, but they are uh, using the same opinion, the same topic. Maybe they are just repeating their, uh, the same sentences. They don't mm -hmm. change. The only, the partner is changing. So it is that for the fluency activity, there is repetition. They are repeating mm -hmm. themselves, but in a meaningful, fun way. Uh, Aliyojum, are you familiar with the uh, concept speed dating? Yeah. Uh, speed. In, in uh, American culture, mostly, I don't know whether they have it in the UK or not, uh, there's the speed dating thing, you know, people get together, all the single guys uh, and women get together in a room and they, you know, they sit in a circle and, uh, you know, if women are sitting, men just change their seat every five minutes till they get to find their match. So this is very much like that, but of course it's not dating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can use this. So, uh, uh, of course, each and every time that you change the person, you repeat the same thing. Hi, my name is, uh, I'm this and I'm that, you know, I do this, I do that. So the, the, the, the paragraph is the same, but the person you're talking is different. So I guess uh, you can adapt it <laughs> in the classroom. Uh, by the way, if you want to share something in the chat box, please share it with everyone in the meeting, not with me only because uh, uh, I'm sorry. How much focus should we put on pronunciation? Uh. Uh, yeah, we need to focus on pronunciation uh, when we are teaching vocabulary, uh, especially, okay? Um, and a, a, an important trick for you, uh, before writing the word uh, on the board, pronounce the word first. Don't introduce the spelling orthography first. Otherwise, we tend to, learners tend to create their own wrong pronunciation and uh, in their mind when they see the word, uh, so they need to first listen to the correct pronunciation and then see the written form. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
I'm, I'm glad you were with us tonight. You attended. Uh, Alioja, it's so yes. nice to hear such comments. Mr. Lojam uh, says, when to correct and when not is a Education. big issue for teacher trainees in practice. Mm -hmm. Maybe for general learners, we can pretend that we haven't heard the mistake. But if mm -hmm. this is teaching practicum, yeah. What do you yeah. think, I, I want my uh, teacher candidates to do the correction if it is... Uh, a group work, a pair work, if the teacher is an outsider just, you know, hearing uh, the mistake or error, uh, they don't interfere. They let the task continue and and note down all the problems uh, and uh, towards the end of the lesson, you know, collect whole class together and go over the common mistakes. Uh, guys, let's do this together. Let's repeat this word. Do you remember the uh, meaning of this vocabulary, etc.? So uh, it's a really great, helpful to keep in note of all the errors. Uh, if there is a, I had a student saying, for example, Sainama, Sainama, go to the Sainama, Sainama, and everybody was laughing. It, it wasn't possible to stay, you know, just wait until the end. You have to interrupt somehow, mm -hmm. yani, because it is, uh, then everybody is off, off task yeah. because of laughing. Uh, it's if you decide, you can feel that, okay, I think I have to interrupt. They, they are repeating the same word a lot and there is, it leads to miscommunication, misinterpretation, then you may interfere. I don't know, Jam. Amy no Jam says she teaches pronunciation implicitly and mm -hmm. she asks whether she has to do it explicitly or not. What do you say? Uh, both. You can use both, but uh, you, sh you should definitely do explicit teaching as well. What is the first sound? Do you hear ship, ship? Choose the uh, corresponding picture. You can do some minimal exercises with your students. This is focused instruction on pronunciation. Uh, and then uh, like minimal pairs are excellent. And you can find minimal pairs exercise on, the, uh, on Google. Uh, there are great resources. Definitely we need to do it explicitly. This is the silent letter. We don't say salmon. We say salmon. We don't say uh, like talk. We say talk. It is L is silent in talk, walk, or salmon. Okay, the silent L sound. It is not pronounced. But if we never teach, if we never take their attention to the silent letters, how come they would realize? It is difficult to discriminate it because after a critical age, we are losing our auditory discrimination ability, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We are born with excellent, great ability to discriminate any sound in any languages in the world. But after uh, Mount Seven, it's there is decline starts. Research shows that you know by time when it comes to age seventeen, it is like pure going almost to zero. Uh, it's unbelievable. So babies have great discrimination ability for the sounds. But so with the students in your classes, don't assume that they will understand. They will hear and they will get the sound. No, we need to show, we need to underline, we need to repeat. We need to repeat in isolation, in, in the context, because intonation and the stress is also uh, need to be taught. Repeating uh, the phrase or sentence. I do, um, as far as I know, again, is a possible pronunciation. Yes. So you don't have to, you don't need to say again. You can also say again. The issue is um, 
with so many dialects and accents, it is almost impossible to follow which is the correct pronunciation, intelligible pronunciation or not. So as a teacher, first of all, we need to educate ourselves. Uh, I remember when I was uh, a very young uh, a research assistant, uh, one of my students was saying often, often, often, and I was really very inexperienced. So I immediately said, what the hell is that? Often, they don't say that. And then, of course, uh, she was a bit reactional. She was like, no, I can't say often. <clears throat> so she knew that she could say often. I didn't. That was my problem. So I said, oh, what the hell, whatever, I will check it. And then I did. And I, I really felt so ashamed and I apologized in front of the class classroom. I said, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know that there was a, a, a pronunciation of that word as often. So, I mean, th this is such a huge ocean mm -hmm. when you're dealing with language. Good luck. Yeah, really? and get really prepared for the lesson, whatever oh, yes. you are teaching that day, in that uh, lesson, check its pronunciation. This is what yes. I recommend my students, my interns. Yes. Um, no, don't be ashamed of, this is not our native language. I do not understand some of the Turkish pronunciations. Yeah. Turkish is my native language and I do not understand it. That's okay. This is a foreign language that we, and we do not live in the foreign society. So the only uh, imposure that we have is television, videos, songs, you know, whatever we can learn and we cannot learn. Language is a living entity. Yes, it's it changing. changes. It changes. Uh, so don't be ashamed. Just know as a teacher to say, oops, uh, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about that. Let's check it together. Yeah, yeah I do don't that. Don't make the same mistake that I did because I was very inexperienced. Don't say, what? Don't say that. That's incorrect. Just say, Ooh, I haven't heard of this before. Let's check it. Let's mm -hmm. check it. Mm -hmm. Because then apologizing becomes even more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, by the way, I see my Feza Hocam. Hoş geldiniz. Welcome. I just uh, see her name. <laughs> Ha, Feza Hocam, hakikaten. Thank you. <laughs> Jenna, I enjoyed it, <laughs> and I was just Hi. commenting. <laughs> oh, oh, very nice! Thank you very much. I it's enjoyed so it. Nice Thank to you. see you I with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sevgili participantlarım, do you have any other questions? What can we do? Fatih <laughs> Terim. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the tabela, Ushul Hocam. What can I do sometimes? Uh, yes. I do not see any other uh, questions, Aylin Hocam. Can you? Repeating the phrase or sentence by increasing intonation on the mistakes has worked very effective, has been very effective with my students in terms of giving feedback as they feel discouraged when corrected. Hujam, um, we have talked about this in another session. I, I don't remember whose session. Uh, that presenter said that uh, rather than uh, repeating the mistake with a different intonation, you should just uh, repeat the sentence to the mistake, pause there, and use a facial expression rather than repeating it, mm -hmm. because then you will repeat the incorrect pronunciation, which is not uh, very. Uh, yeah, it's not good, Tojan. Yeah, it's not good. So it's uh, let's say uh, this student said, 
uh, I want to go to the cinema. <laughs> so you say, uh, you want to go to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, a weird face. What, what, yeah, what is Theory. that word? You know, it's a kind of thing. Maybe that is even better. And one thing mm -hmm. that I remember saying if a student has learned the incorrect pronunciation of the word, if it that is in yeah. their competence, you need to teach it explicitly. Mm -hmm because they will not hear you saying it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the anecdote that I told you about this kurdale thing? Those who, yeah. uh, well, I know, Jamie, you don't know that story. Uh, I went to buy a, a gold coin. At that time, we could afford gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to a newborn baby. Uh, so I said, kurdale um, istemiyorum. Uh, Kuyumcu dedi ki, kurdalesiz olmaz. <gülüyor> Kırmızı kurdale takmak lazım <gülüyor> bebek içinse. Ben dedim ki, hayır ben kurdale istemiyorum. Yo kurdalesiz o, adet böyle. <gülüyor> o kurdale, ben kurdale. O kurdale, ben kurdale. Bu konuşma bir on cümle falan devam etti. En sonunda dedim ki, Beyefendi, o kurdale değil. Explicit correction gerekiyor. <gülüyor> Çünkü evet. ben kurdele diyorum, o kurdale duyuyor. Duyuyor, evet. Kaputun söyle. <gülüyor> yani it's, it's not eatable. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> so... That, that's the anecdote that I always recall and I tell everyone in our native language. Mm -hmm. Even in our native language, we yes. don't notice. Happens. Noticing is critical in error correction. Yeah. We need yes. to make sure our uh, students are noticing the correction. Otherwise, Definitely. it is useless. Whatever you do is useless. And I don't know, Jam, I'm so sorry to say this, but unfortunately, some of these mistakes, or should I call them errors? come from bad modeling from bad teachers unfortunately yeah, unfortunately i know i know john uh, so as a language them. teacher i believe it's our responsibility to teach whatever we want to teach correctly correctly yes because then dealing with the mistake or it may become a fossilized error mm -hmm. and then it will be very hard to change it Mm -hmm. It takes such a long time and so much effort. Mm -hmm. So be a good model. Yes. Aileen Ojam, yeah, what model. a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Ojam. Uh, I hope we can have another session later, maybe uh, focusing on pronunciation, how to deal with uh, oral mistakes error and oral error correction. That will be very nice because it requires a full session rather than five yeah. to 10 minutes. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, I'm to that. Yes, yeah, we, uh, yes, we will pleasure. do that. We, we will arrange it, okay? Uh, okay? Thanks again. And my dear Thank colleagues, you. Thank you so much for being with us and I hope to see you next week on Friday with another distinguished colleague. Take very good care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good evening. Tebrikler, Aylin. Tebrikler. Teşekkürler hocam. Çok sağ olun geldiğiniz için, katıldığınız için. Çok teşekkürüm, minnettarım. Çok teşekkürler. Teza hocam, sağ olun. Çok teşekkürler. Teşekkür ederim katıldığınız için. Eyleriniz ağzınıza sağlık sevgili hocam. Hoşçakalın. Görüşmek üzere. İyi akşamlar.